Hello and welcome to Need Hrania YouTube channel. You're watching another episode of the Game in a Nutshell series designed for explaining the board game rules. My name is Branislav Berec and in this video we're going to learn how to play the game called Pampero from Julian Pombo, published by APE Games. The game is coming to Kickstarter this October and as soon as it becomes available you will find the link to the campaign in the description of the video. Now the game is called Pampero because Pampero is the name of the very strong and cold wind in South America and it, it is a very important source of the natural energy. So you will be building wind farms and electric or, uh, power grids in the state of Uruguay. Everything you're about to see in this video are prototype components so they're not final yet. And now let's take a look how the game plays. The map shows a simplified map of Uruguay with three zones, zone A, zone B and C. In addition, zone A has three sectors, zone B has two sectors and entire zone C is just one sector. These spaces are construction sites where players will build their wind farms, they are needed to produce energy then electrical towers, which are used to transport the energy. And you will need both to fulfill these contracts, which represents supplying the residences, resorts, commercial buildings and so on with energy. There are three types of contracts in the game. These are standard contracts within the Uruguay country. Then we have the remote contracts similar to the local standard contracts. Then we have a so-called foreign contract delivering energy to the neighboring countries Brazil and Argentina. And lastly, we have these special solar contracts. After you build one of the electrical towers, you will be able to choose a bonus token from this bonus token board. And here we have the special scoring cards and special action cards, which you will be able to acquire over the course of the game. In this section, we have the time track with three scoring phases, the first one, second, and the end of the game scoring phase. So these tiles represent the scoring conditions for those first and second scorings, and these are the end game scoring tiles. Then each player has their own player board called a tableau with three action discs, then eight starting cards, wind farms, bulldozers, which are needed to build the wind farms and these electrical towers, those electrical towers are on this special board called the power grid and the income board. And the power grid section contains these tokens called transformers. And here we have the income markers for five different segments of the industry. There are residential buildings, industry buildings, commercial, resorts, and these remote locations. Each player also starts with one battery and $25. The prototype doesn't come with the coins yet, so I'm using some generic poker chips. And also each player starts with this one bonus token. The game is played in so-called turns, and each turn has an action phase consisting of three action rounds, then the consolidation phase and the scoring phase. During each of these three action rounds, you take one of your action discs and place it on your player board. And then you do one of the following. You either take one of the cards from your hand and place it in your tableau, so effectively you play a card, or you retrieve all the cards from your tableau into your hand, or the third option you pass and you take one battery. In each of those three action rounds, you have all of those three options available. So even if you pass in the first action round, in the second, you can continue playing cards and so on. I will cover all those actions later in the video, but in a nutshell, with those actions, you will build your wind farms, you will build your electrical towers, you will fulfill the contracts and place them on your power grid board to gain the bonuses and also increase your income. You will also be able to move your bulldozers to new locations where later you can build the wind farms or electrical towers or with these special small tokens you will be able to take loans to speed up your business development. Then after those three action rounds 
players will perform the consolidation phase in which you will produce batteries, you will collect income, you will move on this time track and determine the new turn order. Then if all players have reached or passed this first scoring space, the first scoring will take place. Similarly, when all players have reached or passed the second scoring space, the second scoring will take place. And finally, when all players reach the final scoring space, the final scoring will take place and that ends the game. Again, I will cover this scoring phase in more detail later in the video, but in a nutshell, during the first scoring, you will collect income for all these areas based on the position of your income markers on your income board. During the second scoring, you will perform something very similar, but this time only the player with the highest number of icons will gain that income. And during the final scoring, players will gain income based on the conditions on these final scoring tiles. Then players will subtract all the loans they have taken over the course of the game, and then the player with the most money wins the game. So in this chapter of the video, I will cover this action phase, which consists of three action rounds. And in each action round, players play in this turn order, starting with the first player continuing to the last player. In each of your action rounds, you have three options, either play a card, retrieve the cards, or pass and take the battery. So let's start with playing the card. To play a card, choose a card from your hand and place it in the leftmost empty space in either the top row or the bottom row. Now, you have to position the card so that only one letter is visible. In this space, there is only one option, the A letter, which represents the zone A. If you would play the card in the bottom row, you have to choose whether you want to see the letter B or the letter C. Then, since the card has this red background with minus dollar symbol, it means you have to pay the associated cost. In this case, it would be $17. If you would position the card like this, you would only pay $8. And if you would play the card in the stop row, you would only pay $6. If you would play a card with this green background and the plus dollar symbol, you would gain the money. So in this example, you would gain $5. If you would play the card like this, you would gain $17. Then some of the cards don't have any requirements in these corners. Some cards have the requirements. So for example, here, you would have to have a bulldozer available, either your own one or of any opponent. In this case, you would have to have any electrical tower available and so on. I will describe these requirements later when I would describe the actions in more detail. Then after paying the cost, you can perform the main action of the card, which is in the middle of the card. And sometimes you will be able to perform a so-called side effect for example, you will be able to increase your energy, so you will produce the energy, or you will be able to place a bonus token on the card and so on. Again, I will describe all these side effects when covering all the actions in the game. Then the second option on your action round, after you place the action token, you may retrieve all the cards from your tableau. As indicated by these very small icons here, you can only do that if you have at least two action cards in your tableau. Take them all back into your hand and then move your discs on this time track one space forward. If there is any disc on that space, place your disc on top of those discs. In addition, move your turn order discs to the same space in this bottom row. This may be important for certain actions in the game which allow players to adjust this turn order. And finally, the third option, which you should normally avoid as much as possible, is to pass and simply take one battery token. Again, move your turn order discs to the same space in this bottom row. In this section of the video, I will cover all the major actions in the game and we will start with this build a wind farm action. First, as this small icon indicates, you can only take this action if there is a bulldozer available in the selected zone and it can be your own bulldozer or of any other player. 
Thus, bulldozers have to be available in the selected zone, so this is zone A, and these are construction spaces where you can build your wind farms. These are construction spaces where you can build electrical towers and these are mixed where you can build either the wind farm or the electrical tower. Note that some of these construction spaces are only available in a four player game. So if there is a bulldozer available in any of those construction sites in the selected zone, you can either use your own bulldozer or the bulldozer of any other player. Note that the purple player also has an available bulldozer here. Then you have to pay the associated cost here, it's $5. So those $5 come from your personal supply and now. If you're going to use your own bulldozer, those $5 will go to the bank. If you decide to use the bulldozer of another player, those $5 are paid to that opponent. Then you can take the wind farm from your supply and place it on the selected construction site. So let's say we want to use our own bulldozer and build the wind farm at this site. Now the owner of that bulldozer can move the bulldozer to any other construction site in the same sector or in any neighboring sector. So it could be this one, it could be an A2 sector, but also this B1 sector. So for example, we can move the bulldozer to this construction site. If the blue player would build the wind farm using the bulldozer of the yellow player, then the yellow player would decide where to move that bulldozer. Then this small white question mark on the green background with the plus symbol means that you can increase your available energy by the number which is next to the card. In this case, it's one. So that means you have generated one energy, so mark it on your power grid board. This token indicates how much energy you have available. You may never have more than 14 energy and never less than zero. Note that if you would build this farm in a zone B, if you would have a construction site available, you would be able to increase your energy by two. However, you would have to pay $10. Finally, in this example, if you have this bonus token space available, as another side effect, in addition to this main effect, you can take one of your available bonus tokens and place it on the card and immediately take the bonus from that token. This is a starting token. You can either choose plus one energy or plus three dollars. Then the next action is building the electrical tower. Similar to building a wind farm, as this icon indicates, you have to have a bulldozer available in the selected zone, so either A or B in this case. And again, it can be your own bulldozer or a bulldozer of any other player. This time it must be one of these construction sites or this type of site. Then pay the cost, which in this case would be $4, or only in case of this special card, instead of paying the dollars, you can spend the batteries. If you build in the zone A, you can spend one battery, in zone B two, and zone C requires three batteries. So you can choose either the dollars or the batteries. Now let's say we will choose the battery this time. And let's say we want to use this bulldozer of the yellow player. So the battery will be paid to the yellow player. Then take the leftmost unbuilt tower from this board place it on the selected location and now the owner of the bulldozer may move it to any other construction site in the same sector or in any adjacent sectors. Building these electrical towers has many advantages. One of them is that those towers unlock these income areas for your income markers. So for example, with building the third tower, you can move your markers to this area, so increasing the income to six. When you build this tower, you will unlock this area and so on. In addition, these towers unlock the columns underneath them where you can place your contracts and gain other interesting bonuses. Very important, they also unlock the number of batteries you can produce during the consolidation phase. Then as the side effect to building this electrical tower, you can choose two bonuses. 
They are taken from this bonus board and from the area which corresponds to the zone where you build the electrical tower. If you build it in zone A, you can only take the bonus tokens from this area. If you build it in zone B, you can choose the tokens from these two areas. And if you build it in a zone C, you can choose any two tokens. However, you must choose two orthogonally adjacent tokens. And they can be either these tokens or the combination of the token and the pre-printed bonus. Or in this example, if you would build it in a zone B, you can actually take these two pre-printed bonuses. If you decide to take the tokens, take those tokens from this board and place them on your player board on the corresponding spaces. So for example, this one would be placed here. This one would be placed in this space. Immediately take those bonuses. I'm not going to explain all the icons here. You can find them at the end of the rulebook, but in a nutshell here, you would increase your energy and gain some money. In this case, you would move your income marker for the remote contracts. In case you want to place a token on your player board and you already have a token in that space, move the new one as close as possible to the previous one and take that bonus. The next action is fulfilling a contract. This is the icon for the standard contract. This is the icon for the remote contract. To perform the action, you have to have an electric tower available in the selected zone. And again, it can be your own tower or the tower of any other opponent. You would have to pay the cost either to the bank or to the opponent if you use the opponent's tower. And then you can choose a contract. This is a standard contract. These are remote contracts. However, in order to fulfill the selected contract, you have to have those types of contracts unlocked by having the electrical tower built from that space on your board. So from the start of the game, each player can fulfill the residential contracts, the remote contracts, and these special solar contracts, more on those later. After you build the second tower, you can fulfill the contracts for the industrial buildings and resorts. And after building the third tower, you can also fulfill contracts for commercial buildings, but they're all only in the zone A and B. In order to fulfill any contract in the zone C, you have to build this fourth tower. So let's say we still have this situation. Since the third tower is not built yet, the blue player may not fulfill this contract, which consists of the resort and the commercial building. But the blue player can choose, for example, this contract, this one, or these remote contracts, and so on. To fulfill a contract, in addition to having an electrical tower in the sector, you also have to spend the energy which is printed next to the contract you want to fulfill. So in this case, it would be one energy. Reduce your energy on your energy track. And note that if you would choose these remote contracts, they don't have the energy requirements printed next to the tile, like in this case. They are printed directly on the tile. In this example, you would have to spend one energy and one battery. Then you can take the token and move the corresponding income marker as many spaces forward as there are green arrows on that tile. In this example, it's just one. If instead we would complete this remote contract, it has three arrows, so the income marker would be moved three spaces forward. When moving these income markers, you can only move them if the space has been unlocked by previously built electrical towers. So in this example, since this tower is not built yet, I would not be able to move the marker to this space. In addition, if the first marker, any of your marker, reaches this 10 column, as this icon indicates, you may take one new specialist card, either the action card or the scoring card. You may take one of these phase up cards, or if you don't like any of them, you can take the card from the top of the deck. Add the card into your hand and immediately replace it with a new card. For each column, you only do it with the first marker reaching that column, if another marker gets to the same column, you don't get any additional specialist cards. After you unlock another column, you may move your marker to the next area. If you move the marker to this bonus space, 
move the corresponding marker one space forward as well. And when any of your marker first reaches this 10 column, take another specialist card and so on. Then you take that contract token and place it on your power grid board. If it's your first contract, you must place it in one of these three spaces in the leftmost column. Then take the transformer from that column, place the token in that space and place the transformer in the space where you completed the contract. That indicates that it was you who completed the contract. Later, when you gain another contract, it must be connected to previously placed contract tile on your power grid board. If you would place it in this space, you can do it for free. However, in order to move it to this space, you would have to spend one energy on your board. Again, place the contract tile into that space. In our example, since we have the second column unlocked as well, the new contract tile could be placed in this space, gaining this benefit immediately. And in order to place another contract tile in this space, it would have to be unlocked by building this tower. Normally, you're only able to fulfill one contract during the action round. So for example, if you would fulfill this remote contract, it will be the only contract fulfilled during that action. However, if you fulfill a contract which is on the space with this link symbol, if there is an electric towel available in that same sector and you have the available energy, in this case you can also fulfill the second contract, following the same rules. Some contract tiles are connected to this bonus tile with these power lines and if you fulfill a contract, and the other side of that bonus tile is also fulfilled by any player, you take that bonus tile into your supply. Another action is to fulfill a foreign contract. It's part of the card which allows you to fulfill a standard contract or the foreign contract. We have already covered the standard one, so let's focus on the foreign contract. This time you have to choose the zone B, because the contracts from Brazil are linked to the sector B2 and the contracts from Argentina to the sector B1. Similar to standard and remote contracts, that sector has to have at least one electrical tower available of any player, which is again indicated by this symbol. Then you have to pay the cost, in this case it's $10, since we are using the purple player's tower it will be paid to the purple player. And then choose one of the phase up cards, pay the batteries indicated on the card and take the card, keep it somewhere near your player board for the end game scoring and take the benefits from the right side of the card. In this example, you would gain $10 immediately plus the income for your residential area, which means $4 and similarly income for the resort area, which is $2. So in total, this contract would net you $16. After that, draw the new card to fill in the empty space. The next action is to take venture capital. In other words, to take a loan. It's not linked to any zone. And as this icon indicates, you will gain income in this case. So since it's not linked to any zone, you can choose the higher value in this example it will be wise to take the $17 and then you take the private investor marker and place it in any empty space on your income board. However, that space must be unlocked by the built electrical tower. Obviously, you can only take the action if you have one of those spaces available. When you place that marker, it doesn't have to be the leftmost empty space. It can be any of those spaces. And after you do that, you can take the income from one of the markers from that area where you place that marker. In this case, for example, $4 for the residential marker. If we would place this token here, there is no income marker here, which means we would not get any additional income. That's why placing it here generates four additional dollars. However, keep in mind that at the end of the game, you will have to pay $30 for each of those private investor markers. The next action is to move your bulldozer or bulldozers. Again, it's not connected to any zone, so 
you may choose the lower cost. However, this time you also have to spend one battery from your supply and then you can either move one of your bulldozers or two bulldozers once each. When you decide to move just one of your bulldozers, you can move it to any sector, any construction space on the game board, because you can actually move it two sectors, which means you can move it from one sector to another and then to another one. If you decide to move two of your bulldozers, each of them can be moved to another construction site in the same sector or to a construction site in an adjacent sector. That applies to both of those bulldozers. Now, anytime you are allowed to place or move a bulldozer, you can move it to any of these empty spaces on this so-called bulldozer grid and gain the benefit of that space immediately. If those spaces would be occupied or for any other reason, if you wish so, you can also place it in this space. There can be unlimited number of bulldozers in this area. If you place the bulldozer in this area of the bulldozer grid, it gets permanently locked there for the rest of the game as indicated by this icon. If you park it in this area, anytime later in the game, when you have a chance to move it, you can move it to any construction site anywhere on the game board. Now let's cover these specialist cards. There are two types of the cards. These are the scoring cards and these are action cards. Let's start with these action cards first. They work in the exact same way as other action cards, so I'm not going to describe all of them. You can find their detailed descriptions in the rulebook, but note that in some cases you will be forced to use your own components only. So in this case, you can only use your own electrical tower. You may not use towers of other players. And although I will not cover all those actions, there is one which I would cover right now. And that's the action called fulfilling a solar contract. Again, it's not linked to any zone, so choose the lower cost. And it works very similar to the standard contracts. That's why there is this black icon there, however, with this solar icon on top of it. And you can find these solar contracts on the left side of the game board. And there are two types of these contracts. One of them has only one icon, the other has two icons. When choosing the solar contracts, you have to follow these arrows and choose the first available contract in that direction. So the first player may only choose this one or this one. And as these icons indicate, to fulfill a contract with one icon only, you have to spend three energy. To fulfill a contract with two icons, you have to spend two batteries. Solar contracts are unlocked right from the start of the game. You don't have to look at other icons. So even though in this case we still don't have the third tower built and the commercial buildings are not unlocked yet, you may still take this contract even if it has the commercial building icon on it. Because the important thing is, it's the solar type of contract. Now you may place it in any available space, paying the cost if necessary, and place your transformer on the space from which you took the contract tile. Then the scoring specialist cards are really special. You may never play them to your tableau. They can only be played during the scoring phase. So let me cover them during that scoring phase explanation. After you complete all your three action rounds, your next action is the consolidation phase. This consolidation phase is also played in this turn order and it's a very straightforward procedure. First, retrieve all your three action discs. Then you can retrieve one card from your tableau. It has to be the rightmost card from either row. When you take that card, you may even take it with any bonus tokens on it. Take the card into your hand. Then you will produce batteries. Look at the position of your energy marker and the column in which the energy marker is located indicates how many batteries you may produce. Count the number of batteries in this tower row from that column to the left. So in this example it's just one and two batteries. If the energy marker would be located here, you would be able to produce one, two, three batteries. Take those batteries into your supply. Then you will generate income. 
for each income marker on your income board, take the income from the same column. So for this token, you would gain $2. For this one, you would gain five and so on. Then advance your time track disk. Again, if there would be other disks in the same space, place your disk on top. And in case you would be already in the last space and you would have to move, you simply don't need to move your disk. At the end of the consolidation phase, adjust the turn order. The disk which is furthest to the right is going to be the first player in the turn order. The player with the disk furthest to the left is going to be the last player. In case there are more disks in the same space, the disk on top is going to be the first. So in this example, the purple player will be the first one, then blue, then yellow. So adjust the disks on the turn order track accordingly. At the end of the consolidation phase, if at least one player has not reached the first scoring phase, simply proceed to the next turn. That means another action phase with three action rounds, followed by another consolidation phase. If, however, all players have reached or passed the first scoring space, the first scoring phase will take place. Similarly, if all players have passed or reached the second scoring space, the second scoring phase will take place, and when all players reach the final scoring space, the end of the game scoring will be triggered. So let's start with this first scoring. As this symbol indicates, you will only count your A contract tiles, so the contract tiles from the A zone. So in our example, it's only this, 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 and this token. These are B tokens, tokens from the zone B, and this is a solar token. Then for each of these four contract types depicted, residential, industrial, commercial, and resort, Count the number of icons of that type, again, only on the A contract tiles. So here for the residential, we have one, two, three, and then multiply that number for the income level for that contract type. So it's four, four dollars multiplied by three, that's $12 income. Here we have one resort icon multiplied by $2, that's $2 income, and do this for all four contract types. During this scoring, you may play these scoring cards. They are one-time use. You can either choose the top or bottom effect. And after you use it, discard the card. You can find the description of all those cards in the rule book. After that, if you have any face down income markers, flip them face up. Those income markers may get flipped face down by certain card effects, and if they are face down, you may not use them for scoring certain scoring cards. Then the second scoring will be done for all contract types, including the remote contracts. However, this time only the player with the highest number of icons will gain that income. During the second scoring, you can count symbols from all your contract tokens, you can also count the symbols on these bonus tokens on your player board and also on scoring cards if you choose to include those symbols in the current scoring phase. So in this example, the blue player has one resort icon, second, third. Now, if you have the most and you must be the only player with the most icons, you can gain income for that type of contract. So. If the blue player would have the most residential icons, the blue player would gain $4. If players are tied, none of those players collects the income for that contract type. You may also play additional scoring cards, and again, at the end of the scoring phase, flip all the income markers face up. Remember, all the scoring cards played during that scoring phase are discarded. And then, when all players reach the last scoring space on the time track, perform the final scoring and then the game ends. First, score these endgame scoring tiles. You can find their detailed description in the rulebook, but in general, the top section is only scored by the player who has the most in that category. In this example, the player with the most wind farms built will gain $15. The bottom section is scored by all players. So here it's $3 per standard contract, which is not a solar contract. 
If there is a tie for that top section, then none of those players will score that section. If you still have any specialist scoring cards remaining, you can play them now. Then you have to pay $30 for each private investor marker. Then gain additional victory points from these type of bonus tokens on your tableau. Here you would gain $2 for each of your electrical tower build. And then the player with the most money wins the game. So that's how you play Pampero. If you have any questions or comments, I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. If you like the series, please subscribe. You can even support the channel on the Patreon page. You can also click on a small button, thank you, under the video and provide some, some small symbolic support to the channel. You've been watching Game in a Nutshell. My name is Branislav Berec and hope to see you next time. I would like to thank everyone who has ever supported the channel and especially the current supporters listed on this page. If you too would like to support the channel in creation of videos like this and other video tutorials and other content on this channel, please visit the patreon.com slash